Today's short video is about this very small HF transceiver called FX4CR designed by BG2FX. The FX4CR is a revised version of the FX4C that I did a review on uh, last year. I'll link that video down below. The FX4CR includes a couple of enhancements over the original FX4C including a wider waterfall display uh, built-in Bluetooth capability and a number of other features. I'll link the website down below where you can read about all of the enhancements to this new radio. After the initial pilot run of the FX4CR, the designer made a couple of minor hardware changes to one of the boards inside this radio and he has very graciously sent all of the early adopters of this radio a replacement board that includes these hardware changes. So the purpose of this video is to show how to replace that board in this radio. Of course, there's probably just uh, you know several dozen people around the world that have got the very early version and will ever have to replace the radio, uh, the board in the radio. But I thought it might be an interesting video topic anyway for everybody else to see, while providing a little bit of instruction for those that will be getting their board and want to know how to replace it. So let's get started. Again, the designer uh, sent this replacement board free of charge to all of the early adopters of this rig, as well as uh, two uh, replacement ribbon cables, uh, just in case the ones that are in the rig get damaged in the process of replacing this board. The tools you'll need are a Phillips head screwdriver and a hex key. Uh, I think it's like around 564, so it's probably a metric size. That's about 1.8 millimeters. I'm not sure exactly. I just went through my box of Allen keys until I found the one that fits. Now the first step is to remove this side panel here, which involves just removing six of these Allen head cap screws. Okay, step two, remove just the top two cap screws here, and that will loosen up the front panel. Okay, to remove the front panel, we need to slide it ever so slightly this way to clear the bodies of these connectors, and then the panel will pull out and come off. Now to remove these two ribbon cables, we've got to pull a couple of clips up off of these connectors here. And I'll do that with this small bladed screwdriver. And that ribbon cable pops out, and we'll do the other side. And that cable pops out. Now the front panel is separated and you can get to work on the rest of this. Now there are two more connections to remove. One is this ribbon cable, which is removed by sliding this black clip down. I'll do that with this small bladed screwdriver. And this very small micro miniature coaxial connection, I'll remove this by uh, supporting it with my fingers and kind of rocking it off with a pair of tweezers on either side. Now with all the electrical connections removed, we can remove the six screws that holds the board in place. Okay, with all those screws removed, this board should just lift right out. With that board removed, we can see this milled out area on this aluminum block, which serves as the heat sink for the RF board, which is mounted here uh, between that block and the back panel. Now some of the hardware changes on the board were right in this area here. If you look carefully you can see some components just kind of mounted you know kind of in air between you know, some of the other pads of other components. That portion of the board is redesigned on the new board here so everything is mounted on the PCB. So uh, other than that uh, these boards are, are, are pretty close to being the same. To assemble this, we just reverse the process. We'll first insert this board into the housing and fasten it down with all six screws. Now a quick tip for any time you're assembling anything that has a number of screws in a given panel is don't tighten any of them down until you have them all at least started. Because this will prevent you from getting the assembly offset a little bit, which might make it difficult to get some of the screws in place. So with all the screws in place, we can go down and snug each one of these up. So we'll reinsert this ribbon cable 
by sliding down the plastic clip and sliding the cable underneath and into the connector. You can feel when it bottoms out and then we'll push the clip back in place. And that locks that cable in place. And so next we'll carefully align this small coaxial cable back up to its connector here and push it down in place. Since I was very careful when I removed this front panel and didn't pull it too far, uh, the existing ribbon cables are actually in good shape and they're still seated well in the front panel board. So I'm just going to reuse those and I'll hang on to the pair that the designer sent just in case I have an issue in the, pro in the future I can replace them. Now the first step is to release these clips so that the ribbon cables can slip in place. So let's do that again here with the small blade of screwdriver very carefully. Now one at a time we'll carefully reinsert these ribbon cables into the connector and then drop down the clips to lock them in place. With the connections in place, all the screws tightened down, we can reassemble the front panel by just simply rotating it around, keeping it slightly separated from the front panel here so that those connectors will clear and go into their respective holes. And then we slide it over like that. Then replace these two screws on the front panel. And then we replace the whole right side panel. And here it makes sense, of course, to just thread in all six screws first and then tighten them up. That should complete the installation of the new board. Let's uh, throw on the power and see if it works. Well, it powers up okay. And it looks like uh, the display is all normal. I don't have an antenna connected, so we're not seeing anything on the waterfall display. But it does look like the rig is, seems to be working here uh, with an initial check. Let's bring it up to the shack and see what it looks like. Well, it certainly seems to be receiving on CW okay. And single sideband seems to be receiving okay as well. Seems to be keying okay in CW and appears to be transmitting properly in single sideband. Okay, so everything seems to be working well. The installation of the board went pretty smooth, and all the functions seem to be working properly. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, and those owners of the FX4CR that got a very early version, when you get the board from you, uh, replacing it is actually very easy. Just take your time, and be careful. Thanks again for watching.